All right. So this is episode one of the VAU podcast. I'm here with uh, Nick Dowdy, a.k.a. Nack David. And, um, yeah, we're just here to talk about life, music, growth, positivity. And, uh, yeah, we're just keeping it a vibe. So what's been good with you, Nick? How you been? I've been good, man. Um, Just been working. This year has been a very, very busy year. But it's been really rewarding, so I appreciate you having me, and sure. it's been a long time coming. <laughs> yeah, no, we've been talking about making a podcast for years now. Yeah, and uh, the fact that we're finally doing it has uh, has me freaking flabbergasted. Um, yeah, it's quite a word. Flabbergasted, <laughs> man, I'm out here. <laughs> but yeah, bro, like you know, we didn't plan anything to talk about during this podcast, so. We're here. We're just here freestyling, and uh, yeah, we're going to see how it goes. It, it literally took us like a half hour to set up. Um, I got Pro Tools running right here. We got Smart Water on deck, and uh, yeah, I guess uh, I'll just start by saying I've been in a place of reflecting, and as I reflect on where I'm at with my life and music and like reflecting alongside God, like one of the things that I feel that God and the universe have been putting on my spirit has just been to be obedient Mm. and making this podcast is, is one of the things that I'm doing to be obedient because I've had, when I meditate and I pray, God tells me to put out content and, um, you know, going deep early, but yeah, just being obedient, man. And, um, like, for example, yesterday, I wanted to post on Instagram, and God was like, don't post on Instagram right now. Go lay in your bed and go listen to Eric Thomas preach the word um, on wow. his uh, on his church YouTube channel. And I was like, really, God? Like, you don't want me to post content right now and try to grow my career? And God was just like, no. Be obedient to me. Go do that. So I went and listened to that uh, Eric Thomas. You know Eric Thomas, oh, right? Oh, yeah. He's been a huge influence on me. Um, So I went over there and I just meditated, prayed, listened to him. And then I got up and I felt inspired. And then I put out like four TikToks after that, racked up like 100 followers. And it was only because I felt inspired from listening to the word that I was able to like get the energy to then put out the TikToks, get the followers and whatnot. But like, honestly, all that stuff doesn't even matter. But it's like... It's all numbers. Yeah, it's all numbers. So. <laughs> but no, I mean, that, that that's awesome because there are some times, you're right, you, you have to be obedient. You have to kind of humble yourself. And, you know, who knows? That, that post could have been a selfish post with right. the intention of being a non-selfish post, but you're selfishly doing it. Um, yeah. But you take that step back, you collect your thoughts, and you can better streamline the the result. Yeah. So I agree, man. Isn't that wild to think about? Um, let me bring this a little closer. Isn't that wild to think about? <laughs> Isn't that wild to think about though? Like putting out content for other people can still be a selfish act if the intention is not there. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, if if you're doing it for for the attention, or for the you know the likes, comments, whatever, you know, you can. It's a high. They literally hack your dopamine receptors, and you know, you think that you're acting in true intent, but really, your brain is tricking you. Yeah, it's wild. They know the social media people, man, if, if anything, with as much ads and just, you know, in-depth knowledge that we have of these platforms from the back end, you know, they, they really know how to manipulate and, and take advantage. Yeah, I mean, the human brain is like a computer, so. Yeah. Um, and if you know the wiring, <laughs> yeah. you can hack it. And I'll be honest, man, like, the, you hear them talking about the, the back end of platforms and everything like that. We're both digital marketers as well. Yeah. So we are both musical artists, but we're also digital marketers. And um, 
We both work for different marketing agencies. We're actually here in IMG Complete right now uh, in the content studio. Shout out to Cam. Shout out to Cameron, Bar Cameron J. Barker, my dude, my mentor, my big bro. Um, and we're in the we're in the office right now making this podcast, but. It's crazy to think from a digital marketing standpoint and how that applies to our artist career for like any artist out there. I think the number one piece of advice I would give to myself, to my former self and to any artists out there who are looking to start to build an audience, because I'll be honest, my audience isn't huge, you know what I'm saying? But it's, it's small, very small. Um, but that piece of advice I would give is to learn digital marketing. For sure, bro. Learn bro. ads and 100%. learn key messaging and targeting. I'm right there with you, man. And that's something where <laughs> we were learning this years ago. But, you know, it takes time to, to master it, to understand what you're even doing yeah. in the first place. I remember, you know, when I first met you, like, I, I remember hearing, I, I was watching Gary Vee a lot. And, you know, his, I think I... I was put on to Gary Vee through like a Charlemagne interview, like one of like three of them that he's done. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, this guy has like a lot of, you know, he's, he's ambitious. He's got the, he's got the, the, um, what you call it? The, the energy that it, it commands a room. I'm like, wow. Okay. Oh, Gary's so, got the energy. Yeah. Gary's no. And, energy. and it's, and it's like, so it made me want to watch and then learn more about. And like over time, it's like, I, I understood that it's like, oh, okay. Digital marketing is the thing that I need to do, but I don't know how to do it. I don't know anything about it. And then that's when I saw one of your comments on his video. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, okay. So, you know, I, I checked it out and I saw that you were local. I was like, wow, this is, this is really crazy. Crazy. And I hit you up in the first, like, you know, couple months, it was like, you probably just were like, this guy's just a random dude, whatever. And, uh, you know, after some time of, you know, growing a, a online relationship, we, we met in person and, you know, I shot that, uh, damn, what, what video was it? I don't pray even remember me. it. That's right. That's pray right. We were in pray downtown, for me, pray for me, pray for me. downtown O'Galley. Um, and yeah, we just kicked it off from there. But my point is it, it took a long time from the, the conception of, I need to learn digital marketing to actually getting in the space and finding out what digital marketing actually is. And, you know, I did have to branch off and find other avenues of digital marketing that fit me, that that way I can get a full 360 picture of what I was actually dealing with. And now it's like I'm at a point four years later, damn right. near, and we're, we're at a point where, you know, I definitely haven't mastered certain aspects, but I have a better understanding of, okay, cool, if I do this, you know, content is king, um, you, have to, you have to pivot and figure out what is actually working. <laughs> and sometimes, man, the content just doesn't work. And, you know, you have to kind of take that back to the lab, figure out some new strategies and, um, you know, really, really learn how to execute properly. I'll be honest, man. I get messages every day from other artists who are like, yo, I just dropped an EP. I just dropped a mixtape. Check me out. Check me out. Do you get those messages? Oh, of course. And, and and I get the ones that are just straight text messages of just the link. Not even, hey, bro, how you doing? Check this out. Can I get your opinion? Just, hey, here's the link. And, you know, expecting someone to do something with that. And I, I think that that's just, you got it all wrong, man. You, your friends and family should support you, but most of the time they don't to the level that you expect them to, right? Because, you know, they're looking out for you. They know you as CJ from third grade or, um, you know, Nick from high school, and they're not expecting you to do that. And, <laughs> you know, you have to find other people. You put yourself in the world where people don't know you as your personal self, and it's a lot easier for those people to see you in that lens of a bigger artist or somebody that commands attention. And over time, then the other people will, you know, that you knew will start to, you know, move the needle to the other side because they see that you're actually doing it. And, you know, it's kind of a... 
Yeah, bro. And they don't even know any better, too. They haven't had the training. I used to, and yeah. dude, I'll be the first one to call <laughs> myself out. I'll call myself out. Like you mentioned, you saw me in Gary V's comments. Mm -hmm. What I used to do is I used to have 10 plus YouTube channels that I would use um, in digital marketing. Like they were clients of ours. Yeah. And I would literally, every time Gary V dropped a new video, I noticed his comment section was where all the attention was. Mm -hmm. So I would go drop a comment, I'd be like, yo, don't worry about who I am. Um, here's 10 free songs you can use in your videos and your content. Da, 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 da. Check me out on SoundCloud. I would drop all the links mm -hmm. and I would thumb up that comment with all my accounts yeah. to make it top comment and hack the <laughs> algorithm. Yep. And um, that's the how the 2017 started, algorithm. The 2017 algorithm, and that's literally how I started building my my audience. And there's still some people who stuck around from that day, but um, I didn't know any better. I'm not proud that I would go hack his hack the comments attention algorithm and like I'm not proud of that. But it was it was what needed to be done for me. I didn't have an I didn't have a marketing budget. I didn't have the knowledge. Yeah. Um, and dude, now I feel very fortunate to have a vantage point to where I know the best way to market music is by making content around your music yep. for TikTok and Instagram reels and Facebook reels and YouTube shorts. Yep. 100%. And then the pieces of content that do the best organically, taking those pieces and running ads against those pieces of content yep. organically and targeting artists that sound similar to you. Yeah. Artists that sound similar to you. You're not your target audience, like Nick was saying, your target audience, like you were saying, bro, is like it's not your high school friends. No. It's <laughs> it's fans of artists that you already sound like. Exactly. So, you know, that's exactly. what I was thinking. And and to go one more step there, it's like knowing both the Facebook and the YouTube landscape and when i say facebook and youtube i mean facebook and instagram is one avenue and then youtube and google since both companies own each other in that sense um you know th there's just different ways to go about it so for example like with facebook facebook has a limited targeting interest group and a lot of the newer artists like XXX Tentacion or Juice World, some of the biggest artists in the last 10 years, are not even targets on Facebook. Yeah, you can't which means them. which means that you have just limited yourself a whole lot of access. So you're instead having to look at the you know quote unquote fathers of those artists. You know, say like Lil Wayne as like rock star ish. You know, Playboy Cardi, Juice World, um, Lil Uzi Vert, those kind of things. But you also have Lil Wayne, who's an artist that he's birthed so many different styles and it's kind of hard to segment. So, you know, that's why I like doing something like YouTube, because you can actually target not only big name artists, but you can target little artists or artists that are maybe in our category and you can section them off and be specific. So then you can find out like, oh, OK, wow, like somebody who's you know a little bit bigger than me i don't know let's say sylvan lequeux or something who i feel would be a perfect fit for you know my brand he's or fired. something like he's that fired. yeah no and and he he's got that storytelling type but then he also can get in his singing bag and um you know he, he just talks some real stuff so for example i could target all of his videos and his fans are those type of fans that will buy his merch, that will go to his shows and do the extras, which is, as an artist, that's what you need. And you can target those people, and they're probably more receptive to something that you're willing to do, and they might convert. You know, you target someone like Drake. Drake has so many different styles and segments of fans that it's kind of hard to you know, target that, that broad and expect to find your niche of crowd. So, you know, it, it's really about knowing all the platforms and knowing, um, okay, what strategies can I implement to get my desired outcome? Yeah, audience segmenting is huge. <laughs> Bro, like you can know, but would you agree that you can know all the targeting secrets in the world, you can know all the ad platforms in the world, mm -hmm. you can be amazing, but if your content isn't inspiring and your content isn't good, 
mm-hmm. then you're just spinning your wheels. 100%. I learned a lot about content from, you ever heard of Nick D? I actually, yeah, the TikTok dude. Yeah, he, Nick he was, D. He blew up on TikTok. Yeah, he blew up. You heard of Connor Price? Is that a song? No, Connor Price is oh, a Oh, Con- Connor Price. <laughs> Connor <Okay>. Price. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Connor Price is a G, bro. He's he's cool with um he's cool with Nick D. He does this thing where he spins the globe and then it's really cool. So like he spins the globe and he puts his finger randomly on the globe and then wherever his finger lands, he collabs with an artist from that country and they do like a video and like a TikTok wow. and he's been blowing up. No, bro. that's it's, super super dope. It's and that, so smart. And that's a that's a really cool idea. Yeah, it's dope. I mean, at the end of the day, every artist is different, right? So the way you came up is not the way that I'm coming up, but we can still use strategies or or be inspired by certain strategies to maybe spin it and do something different that maybe could work out for you, right? For sure. I, I know I, I know I have an artist, um, shout out Ant 40 Ounce. Um, you know, he's he's a very uh, creative individual and he has been posting a lot of uh, pictures and, and reels of him eating and people for some reason like it. <laughs> so he's like, okay, I'm just going to eat in different types of food. I'm hungry. And I mean, I am too, but... Um, and I just ate before I got here, which is really strange. <laughs> but, um, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll post things uh, regarding food and people actually like it. And he also is very uh, meta in his creativity. So he wants you to know that he knows you know. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's, really, uh, it's really cool how you can spin it. You know, someone like me, maybe not so much. I, I'm, I'm more of a hard on my sleeve kind of person and and you're you know what you see is what you get and you know it it, certain styles work better for for other people is what i'm getting at for sure bro one of the reasons i made this podcast if you called and called it via you is because whenever i have guests on like like you um I want the knowledge and the spirit to come through. I want your spirit to come through via you and just go right into the camera and like yeah. just inspire. Like the internet is such a cool, huge place that I feel like there's a place for this type of content. And, um, you know, I know we kind of just did a crash course on marketing for the last 17 minutes, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But yeah, man, it's what we're passionate about. Like you said, we're we're just spitballing. We're going off the off the cuff, and whatever is spilled out is what was meant to be. So. Yeah, bro. And this is what we talk about when the cameras are off, too. Exactly. Like, it's, it's the same things, and you know, I know you wanted to get into just a wide range of topics, and we can do that. You know, it's for not, sure. I'll kind of I'll kind of circle back when I was doing the whole thing with the Gary V comments. Mm-hmm. And um, I'll kind of expand and tell this story because it comes full circle. Um, that's where you found me, right? On the internet yeah. and Gary V's comments. And then he DMs me and he's like, yo, I live five minutes from you. <laughs> and I was like, what in the world? That's how you know there's a God, man. That's how you know like that divine timing is real because, you know, this dude's become one of my best friends. And it's like we've known each other for five years now. Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> I think we um, met, yeah, we met in 2018, but I remember we were talking before, like, around 2017. I'm 24 now, so how old are you? I'm 28. 28? So, yeah, bro, you're coming up on 30, huh, guy? I know, bro. It's, yeah, uh, it, it's It's creeping up a little faster than I'd like, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of in the spirit of, like, you know, you know the cliche stuff, like, uh, 30's the new 40 or whatever, da-da-da, <laughs> but, or 30's the new 20. Wow, I, I screwed that up. 30's but, the new 40. But, <laughs> No, but um, but but really though, like the the amount of knowledge that I've learned in my twenties, like I feel like, just with this digital age, like we're learning so much, so quickly. Like I, I was actually just talking to my girl the other day, mm-hmm. and we were we were talking, we were looking through because I've been sending her a lot of like recipes that I find on on Instagram. I'm like, yo, we got to try this, we got to try this. I've been meal prepping, so. Yeah. Um, you know, trying to lose some weight, get 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 in shape, and and get to a point where I feel comfortable with myself. And um, you know, I'm going through, and I'm like, dang, like I sent a lot of stuff, and I'm scrolling back all the way to April, and it's like I've watched a lot of content in my life to the point where I don't even know 
what I saw last week in comparison to, you know, a month ago or even a day ago. One thing that I've been really working on is uh, Road to 200. You've mm -hmm. seen my Road to 200? Yeah. Dude, I have such a food addiction, and I'll just be completely honest, in the name of the Lord, I have a food addiction, and um, I eat late at night, and yeah. that's really what messes me up. But it's like, dude, like, if I could break that food addiction, I feel like I can do anything because that's one of the hardest addictions to break. Drug addictions are insanely hard to break too, but it's like mm -hmm. you need food to survive and there's food places all over the place. You don't need drugs to survive. You have to eat to survive. So it's a little bit of a different thing there. Um, but yeah, bro, I've been, I lost like three pounds in like five months. Mm. So... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's and, not exactly, you know, where I'm going for, but yeah, well, and I mean, with that, you know, right, what I've been learning, because I actually ended up getting a personal trainer, like, right. not, not personal, personal, but like a group chat, right? So there's like five guys and the burgers goal, and fries. What's that? Five guys, <laughs> burgers and fries. Well, yeah. Um, so, you know, there's like five guys in a group chat, whatever. We all have different goals, right? But basically it's a 90 day program. And I'm actually coming up on the end of it right now. I started out at 180, and I'm like 160, 65 right now. Um, so, I, you know, I've, I've lost a decent amount of weight. But Looking solid, bro. Thank you, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. And, you know, I, I got all the way up to 190 in May, and I, and I looked at myself, and I was like, oof, you know, hey, I, I can't. I, I got I to gotta turn it around now. And the, what I'm getting at, though, is the what I've learned from this is I could work out all I want. But if I'm not actually um, eating correctly and eating on time, that's the big thing. If you mm -hmm. can if you can eat on a schedule mm -hmm. and prep out your meals and say, okay, cool, I'm eating breakfast where I'm having the most high protein and you know the, the higher calorie dense stuff yeah. in the morning, I have all the rest of the day to burn it off. And then you know you have small little meals about three or four more times a day that help cure the, the cravings. Yeah. And then by the time you get to late at night, you're already, your stomach and your body is just already wiped out from doing all that digestion earlier. Right, and right. it's easier to kind of go to bed and wake up in the morning and do the, the whole thing again. And you know, I, I'm not perfect either, man. I eat at night, even last night, bro. I, I, um, before I went to bed, I was like, man, I'm a little hungry, maybe an hour before or whatever. And I had like a little protein bar, but you know, it, it, it's it's about moderation, right? You, you can't you can't gorge yourself, but you also can't starve yourself because. Do you do intermittent fasting at all? Um, I have I have practiced that, and I and I implement it uh, when possible. So, this this program in particular, I haven't been doing that as much. But um, you know, there were there there were certain days that were low, and you know, I was eating over calories, and you're supposed to eat in in a a deficit, I, you know, there's days that I've had a surplus and, you know, I, I counteract it by, you know, fasting a couple extra hours the next day and then jump starting yeah. um, the metabolism. And the other, the other real key that I've learned, bro, is, is uh, morning walks or morning cardio just mm -hmm. in general, because you're fasted and if you're fasted, you also have, um, you know, it, it's a lot easier to burn off fat when you're fasting because your um, I forget what the what the exact term is, but basically your fat burning metabolism is is a lot uh, more active in the morning mm -hmm. when you when you're fasted, and you can burn off a lot more fat easier. And if you if you take that throughout the whole day, you're a lot hungrier right after you get done working out. You supplement that, so you're literally just giving your body the nutrients that it just lost, yeah. and you're not. It's it's going into the muscle growth mm -hmm. versus the, the the fat storage. Okay. So, you know, and like I said, I'm not perfect either, but you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs during this 90 days. Uh, I think I end on you know the 15th, but um, you know the, the 90 day period. But you know, it's just. Uh, it's a learning game, bro, and, and I'm not even all the way there yet, but yeah. I'm learning little things as I go and trying to implement it mm -hmm. into the the diet. Dude, that's dope, bro. That's really dope. Like, and Bro, honestly, someone like you, sorry to cut you off, but someone like you, bro, like you can lose a lot 
if you implemented those things and, and, and did it for at least a good two to three weeks consistently, yeah. I, you could see a lot of, of loss yeah. real quick because, you know, you, you're at a point where you could lose that fat a lot quicker. To be honest, I started taking a new medication about a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. And ever since I got on that medication, my my weight just skyrocketed. I gained like 120, 30 pounds. So what what medication, if you don't mind me asking? Not going to share. Okay, no Not problem. Not going to share. No problem. <laughs> um, no medical records on the podcast. Understood. <laughs> um, but yeah, bro, I started taking this medication and... Mm-hmm. I started gaining weight a lot. So I used to be 260-ish. Yeah. And right now I'm sitting about 395, almost 400 pounds. And wow. it's just, it's hard to even say it, but I want to be like radically honest on this podcast. So that's been one of the biggest struggles in my entire life right now. It's like, dude, I'm wearing flip-flops all the time because I can't reach my feet to put freaking sneakers on. And it's like, it's one of the hardest things I've ever had to deal with. And I'm so thankful that my girl has been patient with me. You know, like any other girl could just be like, yeah, you know, you're too big. Like, I, I don't want to be with you no more. My girl has been so, so patient with me, bro. Mm-hmm. And she loves me and she cares for me. And it's been amazing. Shout so, out Mallory. Shout out Mallory, man. She's amazing. So I'm trying to lose this weight. And, um, you know, walking has been big for me. Yeah. Walking has been big. And you know what? The power of association has been big for me too. Like power of association is so strong that when Cam's eating good, I'm eating good. When I'm in the Got office, yep. I'm not going to bring some BS food into the office knowing that he's here because he's going to look at me a certain type of way. Yep. So it's like we keep each other in check. Iron sharpens iron, bro. 100%. So yeah, like it, it's it good helps peer so pressure. much. It's good peer <laughs> pressure, bro. It's good. It's, it's very good. And it, it feels great because it's like, you know, you're doing the right thing. And the, there's two parts in my day where I mess up. The, if I could master these two parts in my day, I'll lose 100 pounds. The first part of my day that I have to master is when I leave the office, not stopping and getting fast food, not stopping and getting gas station chicken roller bites with the cheese into that racetrack. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Like, so that's one part of the day that I need to master. And then the second part of the day that I need to master is the morning when I work out. So if mm-hmm. I can master that morning workout and leaving the office and not eating BS food, coming home and eating a home cooked dinner from Mallory, dude, that's a wrap. It's down to I have it narrowed down to two yeah. challenging parts of the day. So that's really where I'm at. Well, with that. Uh, you, you have to awareness is the first step, right? So you know you have to be aware of the things that are holding you back and mm-hmm. take those actionable steps to correct it. And I think you know. That, that's big for you to admit that and, you know, to, to put yourself in a position where, you know, now you have a, a checklist. You have something to, you know, check off every day. Did I, did I do a great morning workout? Okay, maybe I didn't do it today, but did I stop and eat something? No, I didn't. So I could check that off. Yeah, so, bro. You know? Yeah. It's just it's just building that that habit base, man. They say they say it takes 3 weeks to to form a new habit, but it takes somewhere, I don't remember the exact verbiage, but it's somewhere between 6 to 9 months to actually make it an embedded lifestyle choice. Yeah. And, you know, it's not easy, man, but as long as you're awake another day, you have another opportunity to to change that narrative. Here's another chance to be radically honest. Another addiction that I've had in the past was like 99% of men have this addiction, bro. And I'll be honest on the podcast, pornography. I mean, that, that that's like, that's like no, that's like a given, man. That's, bro, there's no, it's, it's almost become a norm. <laughs> it's almost become a norm, bro. And today is day 26, uh, porn free for me. So 26 nice. days that I've gone, bro. And I have an accountability partner. Shout out my friend, Chris, Chris Stupak. Um, we go back and forth every day and we just say what are wins and losses for the day, you know, like, and we keep each other accountable. He's on day 60 and I'm on day 26 and bro. And ever since this day 26 of retention too, not just Mm, no porn, but, um, bro, I feel so much better. Like I don't feel that brain fog that, Mm. that porn because porn hijacks your brain and it hijacks your dopamine (laughs) system. A hundred percent. And yeah, bro, like, and not to get weird in the podcast or anything, but this is just like real life. Um, 
I feel so much more focused. So, and I feel like I'm more driven with my work. I feel like I'm more driven to come do this podcast. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm more driven to make more music, make more content. I feel like when I speak, I'm able to speak more clearly, bro. Because like back in the day, 26 days ago when I was using porn, I would be so brain fogged out for like a week after just draining my life energy. Because dude, like that oil that you have in your body, bro, is life force energy. And when you release it, bro, you're literally draining your life force energy. So... That's an ancient practice too, like retention. So just sharing that. Thanks for uh, not judging me, guys. I'm being radically <laughs> honest on this podcast. Yo, via you, episode one, what up? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you know, not to go super deep in it, but, you know, that is something that a lot of men um, suffer with. And, you know, it doesn't help when you have a culture that really pushes it out into the forefront, you know, and... You know, I could get I could get a lot more uh, deep with that, but you know, it, it it is a problem, and the fact that it is so normalized now, I think that's the major issue. But people people like to, you know, um, people like to make excuses for why it's a good thing when really it's there, there's nothing actually good about it other than its profit. Yeah, it tricks your brain. <laughs> it tricks your brain into thinking that's what making love is about, but it's really, it's not. It's, it's not, totally it's different totally when you're different with somebody yeah. and actually in the moment versus watching two people do it. Yeah, it's totally it's totally different, <laughs> Just bro. Just talking about and it. When it's you, so and weird. when you yeah, when you actually break it down like that, it's like okay. So imagine yourself just in a room with those people and you're doing what you do. Like is that what is that what you want to do on a regular basis? Is that really what you want to do? Uh, and, and if you if you break it down like that, it's like nah, I'm not I'm not that kind of dude. But you know it, it it's an easy it's an easy escape. You know it's an easy uh, what do they call them? distraction, right? Yeah. And it, and it's you know it's a slippery slope. Yeah, it sure is. Sure <laughs> is. I've been on benders, bro. I've been on benders where I was watching it multiple times a day for five, six, seven days in a row. Oh, yeah. And now oh, it's yeah. like, dude, 26 days free. I feel like I'm out of jail, bro. <laughs> like, I'm like, yo, what up? I'm free. Got you the know? chains off me. Shout out to God. Shout out to the good Lord and his universe, man. Let's freaking go. Yeah, man. And, it, and it's crazy because I don't know about you, but, you know, I first came across porn at 12 years old. Yeah, and I was young. Like, I was young. And it's like, that's not healthy. And it's like, you know you're doing something wrong, but you also don't mind doing something. And it's a weird, it's a weird, uh, like, dichotomy to deal with, but... You know, it is it is one of those things, man. It's a it's a challenge. Man. Speaking of a challenge, bro. <laughs> speaking of a challenge, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it uh, left field here. Okay. I'm also like a year and a half weed free too. Hmm. I haven't smoked weed in about a year and a half. Ever since I started taking my medication, I had to stop the weed okay. because that would interfere with my medication and everything like that yeah, and yeah. have like side effects. So, yeah, bro, year and a half. Weed That's free, good, 26 days That's porn good. free. So the food, the food is like the last addiction that I'm really battling. So I'm trying to replace it. Like they say, don't replace an addiction with another addiction, but I'm trying to replace my food addiction with a workout addiction, bro. Like I really addicted to working out and doing workouts that are fun too. It's so different, we should bro. play some basketball sometime soon. That'd I mean, be, I'd, be, I'd be down. I, w- I was never a huge basketball player, so yeah. I'm not really that good. And but. Me neither. <laughs> Shoot some hoops you know, or something. I mean, I'm down. Yeah, that that would be that'd be fun. And I mean, we're we're about to go on a, a walk after this, just kind of catch up, get some and cardio, in. get some cardio for sure. So, um, yeah, man, I, I'm totally with that. I, and I, and me personally, I played soccer as a kid, mm-hmm. so it's like I haven't played in a while, and I've been I've been getting that itch again, right? Yeah. So it you know it'd be cool to kind of tap back into the things that you know made me feel alive as a kid yeah bro get in your uh fun bag for sure bro. yeah like get in that baggie like dude like i've been i grew up playing baseball like yeah, com- competitive yeah. baseball like aau and all that type of stuff on track we used to travel the east coast playing baseball and like i was a lot more in shape back in those days man like when i was 16 17 I was like, get, I was getting strong in the gym. I was, I was losing some, some good weight and like, bro. Like, so now I'm at a place where I'm sitting 
darn near 400 pounds and it's like I just borderline can't believe it so I guess with that being said I'm just trying to lose that weight and I mean dude I'm, I'm done talking about it I'm done talking about it I know it's a podcast and you talk about things but it's like <laughs> <laughs> I'm done talking about it all you got to do is do it man so well and and I think another good key is during that oh I guess mine is off um, <laughs> um, another good thing with that is I see you, you've been drinking that water during this whole podcast and, yeah. you know, the more you can just flush out your system with water, the better. Um, I know, I remember when we would, uh, we'd go out on business meetings back in the day, we'd get those, uh, seltzer water with, with lemon yeah, and, bro. you know, things like that. And it's like, bro, I, I don't even drink any of that anymore. And it's just straight water, man. And yeah, bro. that, that's. And it's kind of crazy because like good water, actual water is now becoming harder to get a hold of mm -hmm. versus Coca-Cola. You got all your sodas and, you know, all these juices and lemonades. And don't get me wrong, I'll, I'll drink a nice lemonade. I, you know, I, uh, I do like that every once in a while, but, you know, it, it just doesn't compare the water, you know, people say that it's bland i don't care i like bland man yeah it's, uh, i like it's natural just... i like natural bro <laughs> we have so many memories man like remember, remember going to orlando and you guys saw that bear you and tim saw oh that wow bear. yeah we were just outside and there's just a bear just in the road <laughs> <laughs> like okay it's a That's... freaking bear in orlando yeah man, we have you know so many you know what you know what's crazy is speaking of animals um i was walking the other day around like my neighborhood and I go out, I go outside onto one of, not the main street, but one of the side streets from the main street. And I'm just walking, minding my own business, right? Yeah, yeah. I look up, mind you, this is like seven in the morning or whatever. And it was some kind of bobcat or something, bro. And it was just staring me down right oh, in my snap. eyes. And I'm looking and I'm like, what are you going to do? And he just looked at me like, what are you going to do? And so I just kept walking because <laughs> I was like, I'm not dealing with Did it. Did it follow you or anything? No, no, no. Oh. And and it was one of those things where I like, I kind of like looked up and I was like, whoop, I need to go the hell away from wherever I am right now. Yeah. And uh, I, I ended up looking back and he was gone. But it was like, you know, I've been I've been looking around again. Every time I walk that, that path, I'm like, Whoa. you uh, you I think you, you could take a bobcat? I don't even want to, bro. Yeah. What would <laughs> if you I, do? If I, if I have to, then you just have to get big yeah. and show your dominance. But, I mean, I'm not going to take that chance. If bro. you had to fight a bobcat, how are you going to go about it? What, what's your approach? Well. You going to go for the kill? N no. No. Might uh, be the only way. I mean, yeah, it might be. But, you know, my thing is just to scare it off. Yeah. You know, like, like I said, just get big, you know, you have to spread your body and really like you make a bunch of like deep noises, like, like, you know, <laughs> and <laughs> just try and scare it, run at it. And then it's like, oh shit, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe I need to back off. But you know, if I, the way I think about things is like, if, if I'm, if I'm not bothering you and you're not bothering me, then we're good. Yeah. We, we could still coexist yeah, and, yeah. you know, do what we need to do. But if I had to know, fight a bobcat, bro, I'm going straight for the eyeballs. I'm going straight for the neck, trying to break its neck, trying to do something. Cause like, I mean, yeah, you would have to break its neck. Yeah. You'd have to do that'd something. be the only way. And saw, as long saw, as you don't get, as long as you, that mouth doesn't get to you with, with the sharp teeth. Yeah. Guard your, guard yeah, your neck, bro. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, could they, your... they, they have pretty sharp claws too, yeah. but how know, big? I, they're, they're pretty big, right? They're, they're, yeah, heck yeah. yeah but th this cat that I saw was probably my height standing up on two legs. Sheesh. And I'm five seven. Yeah. You know, this is a pretty decent sized cat. And I'm yeah. like, uh, it's a big cat. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you stay over there. I'll yeah. stay over here. We'll, we'll, we'll mind our own business. <laughs> so but, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Um, and we'll both give our answers to the questions. Okay. Um, what do you think keeps you grounded when it comes to like building an audience? Because building an audience is not a natural human thing. Yeah. Like if you think of like ancient times, human beings aren't meant to build an audience. We're just meant to exist and, and build a tribe. But like nowadays with social media, you can build an audience and you can get fame and you can get this achievement and you have all these thousands of eyes on you and impressions every day, um, which is not natural. 
Um, so how do you stay grounded when it comes to trying to build an audience? That's a good question. So I think one of the ways is just being, keeping it humble, right? And, and knowing the limits because what I do for at least for advertising purposes is I try to keep the budget lower and build each individual relationship one by one. So if I see somebody that comments on my thing or they DM me or something, like I have the time to uh, reach out to that person and actually have a conversation yeah. or, um, but I, I guess, you know, that that's one way because, you know, if you get, if you get hundreds and thousands of people coming in every single day, you know, it's kind of hard to manage that and then they just become a number. Um, and, and I don't ever want to treat people like numbers because that's not, that's not that's not how it is, and and yes, I get it. There's a lot of bots in the world and or in the online world, and I guess in real life too, right? Yeah, Walking NPCs. clones, but <laughs> um, you know, it, it's. Uh, I think I think one of the big things is you know keeping keeping my family close, keeping my girl close, and she she humbles me every single day, man. There's there's times where it's like you know hey, why man. are you on why are you on your phone? Like come spend time with me, and it's like wow, you're right, like these people online don't really matter as much as the people in real life. Yeah. You know, that, that's kind of, it, it's, it's a nice um, wake up call every day, you know? <laughs> Amen to that, bro. Amen to yeah. that. I would say the way I stay grounded while trying to build an audience is thinking of my supporters, not like as fans, but thinking of them more as like friends. Yeah. Like, dude, I'm building a group of friends, a huge tribe of friends that who I think want, the same as you who think the and same and who want to see you win, want to see me win and who identify with similar things I identify. And, you know, the other way I stay grounded is by staying rooted in God, man, like being rooted in God and God's universe. And, you know, whatever you believe, I think, Believing in a higher power is super important. Me personally, 100%. me personally, I, I love Jesus Christ and, yeah, I, and I believe I in too. God. And, um, you know, I hear when he speaks to me through my intuition and my thoughts, because there's a lot of times, like you say, like, it's not about being on your phone, trying to build an audience. Sometimes it is about putting your phone down and like spending time with your girl. And like, you know, it's another thing I heard, um, I believe it was from this guy, Jarrett, uh, from Soul of Jarrett. He said something along the lines of, and I'm probably going to butcher it, but he said, when I hear my inner voice, you know that inner voice that you have in your head? Yeah. He said, when I hear that inner voice in my head, I ask it, who are you? I ask it, who are you? And it says, like, it says something along the lines of, I'm God, I'm you. I'm God, I'm you. Like that inner, inner, inner voice that you just know, like that intuition, that's mm -hmm. God speaking to you, man. So that's really how I stay grounded. Intuition is powerful, man. And I think, you know, one of the things that um, I learned early on actually working here at IMG was trusting my intuition. And sometimes, you know, trusting your intuition isn't always going to be the best for other people necessarily. It might affect them differently, but as long as you're sticking to your path, there's always time to circle back around and, you know, reconnect. And, for sure. you know, um, and really just once you're rooted in yourself and you know what you can bring to the table and, you know, what you're about you're able to give a lot easier and selflessly, <laughs> you know, yeah. cause you, you understand your value. You're able to communicate that. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's organic. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's a good, that's a good answer. You got any questions for me? I mean, if I do, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. It's been 46 minutes. Yeah. Nice Same. little, nice little, uh, chunk of, chunk of time. Yeah. Episode <laughs> one, episode one of Via You with Nack David, AKA Nick Dowdy in real life.
We know your government, so don't mess up. <laughs> well, I put my own government on my on on the internet, so yeah, it is go. what it is. Um, <laughs> and guys, this podcast is literally a way for me to. So I have this fantasy in my head to where I'm gonna put out all this content and these podcasts and music and videos and social posts. So one day when I'm 80, 85 years old, I'm gonna sit with my family and we're gonna watch all of it. And we're just going to watch the progression. So this is Via U. I'm Via CJ. It's Nack David. What's up, guys? Out. All right, guys. Peace. Peace.